Oh, he's a monster. A pure psychopath. So rare to capture one alive. From a research point of view, Lecter is our most prized asset. Wow. You know, we get a lot of detectives here, but I must say I can't ever remember one as attractive. Will you be in Baltimore overnight? Because this can be quite a fun town if you have the right guide. <laughs> well, I'm sure this is a great town, Dr. Chilton, but um, my instructions are to talk to Dr. Lecter and report back this afternoon. I see. Well, let's make this quick, then. We've tried to study him, of course, but he's much too sophisticated for the standard tests. <laughs> oh, my, does he hate us. Thinks I'm his nemesis. Crawford's very clever, isn't he, using you? What do you mean, sir? Pretty young woman to turn him on. I don't believe Lecter's even seen a woman in eight years. And, oh, are you ever his taste, so to speak. I graduated from UVA, Doctor. It is not a charm school. Good, then you should be able to remember the rules. Do not touch the glass. Do not approach the glass. You pass him nothing but soft paper. No pencils or pens. No staples or paper clips in his paper. Use the sliding food carrier. No exceptions. If he attempts to pass you anything, do not accept it. Do you understand me? Yes, I understand, sir. I'm going to show you why we insist on such precautions. On the afternoon of July 8, 1981, he complained of chest pains and was taken to the dispensary. His mouthpiece and restraints were removed for an EKG. When the nurse leaned over him, he did this to her. The doctors managed to reset her jaw, more or less, save one of her eyes. His pulse never got above 85, even when he ate her tongue. I keep him in here. Dr. Chilton. If Lecter feels that you're his enemy, then, um, well, maybe we'll have more luck if I go in by myself. What do you think? You might have suggested this in my office and saved me the time. Yes, sir. Then I, I would have missed the pleasure of your company, sir. When she's finished, bring her out. <laughs> <laughs> 